Hey, Jesus loves you, and today is Diaries of a Holy Night, the in-between, chapter 7, Choir. A ten-mile perimeter wall surrounded the bottom of the trees. Every couple of feet was a cannon gunner aiming out into the thick woods. The group pulled up to a parking lot just inside the wall, inside the city. The human driver delivered them into the hands of a well-armed group of simps, apparently they were expected. The simps grabbed their tails in honor before hurrying them through the walled town sorry about that, and onto what appeared to be an escalator at the base of the trunk. Justin recalled the slide in the southern Simperon forest that Aaron used, and knowing that the simps didn't use cutting-edge technology, thought this was out of the ordinary. But, after seeing a group of simps pulling the stairs upward by a rope, stopped thinking about it. The town they passed through was what most of the port town consisted of. Tents banded together like Faroche eggs, just that these were the size of three to five story buildings. The simps here were dressed in primitive clothes, not armor, as, as if it were a safe zone without worry. The ride up the escalator took an incredibly long time, and that wasn't even to the halfway point. They emerged somewhere near the middle of the tree into a large area inside of it. It was like the inside of a coliseum with walkways. All along these holes, called Ken holes, were usually colored names etched around them to signify status. What do these names mean? Justin asked. These, Aaron answered, are the names of the many simp lesser nobility that sprung up from the first simps until now. But they're in the upper parts of the higher nobility and my royal family, the Howards. Each can hole leads to ancient apples that we carved into houses millennia ago. The older is for the sturdier hearted families, the newer is for the younger families. We live in those apples. Why are the Howards the leaders? Justin asked, causing Jake Orion to snicker. Was there a vote? Why is he laughing? Before the Devma were our enemies, we had to contend with the devil worms. Randall shuddered. The 20-foot worms with razor-sharp teeth used to live in these apples. Did you know that we once lived on the ground and chased the squids in for fun? <laughs> but... My people, the Howards, were a foot taller than all other simps and killed off the worms, claiming these trees for our own. From there, we branched out and claimed every other forest in the world. I hear tales that, that the worms still live in the middle of the wastes, Randall claimed, and with <laughs> chimed in with a look on his face that he would use to scare young simplings upon first hearing this tale. Impossible, because they cannot live in the ice. No apples there. Even the very first elite simp was a Howard. Douglas Howard the Third, named after his mother Douglas and his dad Howard mightiest of the Howards. He stood against the death mesh and even gave the devil a broken arm at Tikva. Whenever anyone tests the honor of the light, a Howard will be there to break its arm. Because of this act of heroism, the Howard line has been made chief over all of the simps of this world, even in the far-reaching islands where they eat fish. So, in a way, the light elected us Howards as chiefs. Your dad must be famous for something incredible then, and Justin said. Well, Aaron fumbled for an answer. Uh, he does have a funny Squinson impression. It's funny for the first thousand times you hear it. Justin was horrified by the implications. 
Stretched before them were long corridors of ken holes, and as the group hurried along, they began moving upward along the tree on an inverted walkway. They took a rest halfway up from there, where a whole floor of the tree was designated for food stalls. In the matter of just a few minutes, each member of the group had a porcelain toilet with delicious smelling food. Justin didn't hesitate at all this time. Continuing up, the holes now had richly decorated doors that all read Howard. Only one door differed. It had a golden border with the name Foster long since crossed out. A sad look took hold of the simps' faces, noticing the hole. Finally, reaching the apex of Simperon City, they emerged into a vast hall at the top of the tree. There was a tree-sized window that looked out over the forest toward the northern mountains and beyond. The room was full of golden doggy toy paintings, pots that burned bacon incense, and statues of famous simps 12 feet in height made of dazzling bronze. These statues were also Aaron's relatives. Each had their legends chiseled onto mantles below them. These ranged from Bill Howard the Monstrous, for he was 12 inches thicker than most simps, to Magnus Howard the Whimsical. His inscription was just a question mark. The room domed up around them into a 30-foot half-sphere made of the capital city's heartwood. In the very middle of the chamber were 70 plump simps wearing gold robes singing together in their weird simp language, which consisted of howls. They stood around a well made from gold and holite. Oh, uh, <laughs> they stood around a well made out of gold and holite stone. It radiated a peaceful glow of light that danced along to the crazy sound. This is the room of song, Aaron whispered. This is where our laws, our lawmakers, the choir. Meet to sing our problems into solutions. Every one of the members voice their opinion through music before they finally pray and receive a decision from the light. The authority of any problem comes down, of course, from the father, the chief, unless the light speaks differently. In absence of my father, these singing simps are our leaders. Aaron motioned for the humans to stay back as he, Randall, and the simp soldiers moved into the chamber. They started to sing along with them. The robed simps stopped in wonder at this new song they recognized. They turned to find Aaron, and within an instant, the mood of the room transformed to joy in any language. The tubby simps ran at Aaron with excitement. Whether it was for him being alive or just to see the chief's son again, Justin didn't know. But the sheer amount of tail grabbing was ridiculous. Justin's chest burned fire bright as he jumped in front of Aaron with his sword spoken in his hands. Aaron's tail was at risk of detachment and someone had to protect it. The simps fell backwards trying to get away from him. A crack and a whoosh set Justin flying across the room. He stopped in midair instead of crashing against the walls of the chamber. The young man looked around to find the culprit that had just knocked him away so easily. Where he once stood was a floating, muscular-looking simp in a purple superhero costume floating. I said floating twice. <laughs> By the look of it, uh, this was a female simp. Aaron and Randall looked at Justin with a sense of disbelief. Jake Horian was beside himself with laughter. How did you do that? Justin asked, pointing at the floating simp with his called sword. I am the protector of the king of the forest, the floating simp said in a beautiful soprano puppy voice. That's not beautiful, but I'm trying. The elite simp of Ciparon, my title is Justice. This human is my friend, Pharaoh. Aaron said as he stepped between them. Aaron caught eyes with the female elite simp and an awkward longing shot between the two. Mm. He has protected me and was protecting me again because 
Well, Justin, can you explain yourself? I, I thought they were going to rip your tail off, Justin responded, causing laughter to break out in the room. He then noticed something else entirely. Hey, I'm floating. Yeah, Justin or Jake Orion responded from far back across the room as he too left the ground to hover noiselessly. All medium protectors and higher can. Cool, Justin exclaimed, then looked at the power at the powerful simpus. And what's an elite simp? Farrah landed next to Aaron, this time trying too hard not to catch each other's gaze which in and of itself was obvious. Hmm. We were the protectors of the in-between long before your kind ever stepped foot into our world. We prayed to the light when the darkness attacked us. The light responded by giving us these sacred pools at the top of the grand trees. The pools had the power to make one of our kind into an elite simp. We are as fast, as strong, and as tough as human knight-class warriors. Even blowing away some of the lesser holy knights in terms of raw power. She looked over at Jacorian, who was clearly oblivious. We fight the demo with sword or shield because our knuckles, knees... Sorry, without, without sword or shield because our knuckles, knees, feet, and armor are encrusted with holite steel. We live as long as we are not killed. Otherwise, we are what you would consider immortal. Actually, much like yourselves. If we die, another of our clan is chosen and it becomes the elite simp. If one of us is tainted by the darkness, it becomes an evil simp, and another is chosen. My name is Farrah Foster. Don't worry, my high protector friend. I gotta do Aaron's voice. Aaron continued as he waved around the room. This place is safe, and for now, your job is complete. You can relax. Justin looked from Aaron to Randall, both of which gave him a look of uneasiness at what had just happened. He moved over to the corner of the room, dejected with his fire glowing faint, and leaned against the wall. Even Jay Corian shook his head. The choir jumped all over Aaron again, sniffing him until there was nothing left to sniff. They even half-heartedly embraced Randall, and though he had bathed in the river, still looked a mess. A huge simp came into the room that looked just like one of the statues. This simp wore armor made of gold with a purple half cape over his back. Father, Aaron yelled as he turned to stare at the chief with glee. Aaron ran to his dad, happily sniffing him. They embraced in a long doggy hug. They started to sing in perfect unison the song of the Howards. The chief looked nothing like Aaron. Instead, he was like a full-grown dog with gray hair running down his back and an eye patch covering the last evidence of a battle. He was at least a foot taller than Aaron. The chief stopped singing his song abruptly and fell to the floor whimpering. The rest of the crowd followed suit. Justin was so confused by this that he left his spot to ask Randall, What's going on? Randall looked up with tears dripping to the ground and said, We are singing the songs of our fallen brothers so that their memories can pass into the world of our trees through our tears. It is a right that all some kind could bestow on our fallen brethren. It is also said that you can hear for the last time these songs throughout the forest. Humans call it the ritual of doggone, Jake Orion spoke with a tear running down his cheek. Justin walked over to the group of whining dogs with a purpose in mind. He knew what it was to lose someone all too close to him and thought it would be an honor to transfer his sister's memories into the tree. He fell to his knees, trembling, recalling all the best memories he spent with his sister. He poured out his memory through his tear ducts. A steady stream ensured him that she was implanted there forever. 
The simps were honored that a human child would share their tradition. Only one other human had done this right. Trevorian, first king of the Holy Knights, for he lost his bride. After crying his eyes out, he felt drained of all strength. He meandered over to a doggy bed and curled up. He passed quickly out of this world into the world of dreams. Movement of feet and the sound of frightened barks sounded from all over the music chamber, which awoke Justin. He called out his sword and began to search for enemies. To his surprise, he didn't find any. The choir members were running in circles, jumping through hoops, barking at each other and acting unusually. Justin ran over to Aaron, who was arguing with his father. As he went, he caught a disturbing sight out of the window, stopping dead in his tracks. There was a black army as far as they could see, and as thick as the valley between the mountains in the north. It was marching on the forest. Toward the edge of the forest were fires and explosions, the flames more pronounced in the darkness of the hour. The simps were defending the forest, but would their gates hold out against such a massive force? Much has happened since you slept, Aaron said, not breaking eye contact with his father at Justin. I sang the songs of the simps that have died defending the southern Simperon forest. I sang of our dire quest here. I sang of the treachery of the warriors and the bravery of my two human protectors. I sang of the Dorian taking Mike to train in the ways of the Holy Knight. And I sang of... Wait a minute, Fenny did what? J Justin raged, causing Jake Orion to wince. Why wasn't I trained to be a Holy Knight? I mean, if Jagorian could be one, then I should be more than enough. Because I needed backup quickly for this mission, and you were all they could afford to give me, Jagorian interrupted. Not that I couldn't have taken this mission by myself. All right, but why are all these simps going nuts, Justin added. Is it because of the army outside? A, messenge a messenger came running from the Cipperon fields due north of our forest, Chief Thomas said, also not looking away from his son. He was badly injured and carried a song of death from the garrison there. He sang to the, that the Devma invaded from the north waste in Belcroint, breaking through the swoven defense. They have marched all the way to our gates just miles away. Therefore, our Sip brothers are going crazy with fear. Our gates will hold, so I'm not worried about it, unlike my son. Of course I am, Aaron grumbled. My father will not send our army to the north to repel the invaders. Instead, he is gathering our whole army to fight the last bits of resistance in the southeast. Yep. Isn't that what we're here for? Justin asked to the annoyance of Aaron and the pleasure of Chief Thomas. Yes. Why waste our efforts on an army that will be defeated by our impenetrable defenses here when we can reclaim our home in the south, Thomas scolded. You see, son, once you become chief, you can lead our tribe all over the light's creation for no reason at all. But while I'm around, we will not fall to pieces in such a way. What? Why would we do any of that? Aaron asked. What my father doesn't understand is that this is exactly what the Devma had been hoping for. My worry wars weren't trying to kill me this entire time, but captured me to use me as a pawn to get my father to divert his whole military to the south, leaving the forest just waiting to be invaded, which is, which is exactly what he intends to do anyway. The chief doesn't know how much the Devma numbers have grown, like they have a single populace again. This, this time millions are coming, Aaron gravely replied. Justin was completely confused by this. Don't let your delusions get the best of you, my son, Thomas roared. Justin, be, just because you abandoned your position in the south doesn't mean that the Devma have become stronger. It means that you are a poor leader and could not break an attack by a few lousy pests. And what what of the rest of the simps around the world, Chief Thomas continued? Why haven't they contacted us about a Devma outbreak? The only plea we have received is from the Vimps, our southern cousins. 
we have to think about retaking Viperon, not the small matter here. The only way to do this is to hold a, in southern Simperon where your leadership has failed. Aaron swallowed hard before responding. You will see how powerful the Devma have become, Father, when they march on this very tree. Do you remember what happened the last time they did? I am going to the north with or without you, Aaron said, as his father's face shifted from anger to dread. I'm going to protect our home, as a Howard should, fearless against an overwhelming army. Chief Thomas gasped at these words, looking up at his child with tears starting to appear. Justin flew forward to the chief's side, worry thick on her face. Oh, sorry, Justice flew forward to the chief's side, worry thick on her face. Justice is the elite simp. Please, son, do not go to the north, Chief Thomas said, falling to his knees. Our defenses will hold until the Holy Knights get here to wipe this pathetic Devma out. This is, that is their purpose. Yours is to lead when I am gone from this world, not to run off and lose your life over pride. Aaron reeled around and walked toward the door. Randall got up, grabbed his tail toward the chief, and hobbled after him with his machine gun in tow. Aaron stopped as he got to the door of the chamber and looked back at Justin. Justin? Jake Orion? Your job was to protect me, correct? That's right, Justin replied as Jake Orion nodded his head. I'll protect you with everything I've got. Helping out my friends is very important to me. That's all I needed to know. Aaron said, cocking his head to his dad. Dad, if, Chief, if my song is cut short this day, please remember me with honor and not as the failed leader you think I was. If you could spare the tease for, tears for me at all. Aaron walked out of the choir room with tears streaming down his fur.